Oh, hi YouTube. Well, in today's episode, we're going to have a look at a number of news items and follow-up from previous videos. In particular, follow-up from the glider crash and fatal accident uh, video. We've had a number of questions and comments from people. We are having a look at this interesting company creating an automatic in-flight auto tow hookup system. We're also going to have a look at some of the latest features from PureTrack and Udi's and Audi's and CU Navigator on your phone. First up, some feedback about the last video I made about your chances of dying flying gliders. This had a huge amount of feedback from people. It's over 700 comments now on the video. Really want to thank everyone for their kind words and feedback. Obviously it resonated with a lot of people. A few people uh, were negative about the video and it's not unexpected really. Uh, but I think it's important we all understand the risks of the sport we love. I had a lot of people say that Contest flying is obviously a lot, lot more dangerous than non-contest flying. And I thought about that and decided to have a look at the stats of the New Zealand glider accidents to see if that statement is true or not. Now, there's a million ways you can slice and dice statistics. I just looked at our fatal accident history record and at the number of accidents that were involved in a contest or not. And actually, we had a very small number of fatal contest accidents, two in total. So from the stats here, I would say most accidents happen outside of contest flying. What about mountain flying? Uh, a lot of people will notice that a lot of the accidents in New Zealand are from mountainous uh, flying. And I would say that is true. 60% of fatal New Zealand accidents have either happened over mountains or at least hills or uh, spurs and terrain that's higher than normal. So that is quite a high percentage. And it really uh, re-emphasizes how important it is to learn how to mountain fly with experienced instructors and keep yourself safe in the mountains. It's also very easy to collide with the terrain when it comes up to meet you. How many of New Zealand accidents were uh, stall or spin related? Some accidents were very clear that uh, the person spun into the ground. Others weren't so clear, but I've made my best guesses here. And it's about half of all accidents look like they involve stall or spin. Now, spinning might not be the cause of the accident. You know, they might have got into trouble, turned tightly right next to the mountain and ended up spinning, but the problem actually started earlier when they didn't give themselves enough room, for example. But it gives a rough idea. Stalls and spins, you need to be able to identify them and get out of them quickly and efficiently. Keep your speed up, keep your safe speed near the ground up. I also had a look at how many of these accidents were pilots with less than a thousand hours. The average hours was about a thousand, so below average versus above average. Over 60% of them were under a thousand hours. So we only had one that was under a hundred hours. There's one very new pilot killed in New Zealand, sadly. He only had 16 hours experience. Uh, all the rest were in the hundreds of hours and then some of the others were thousands of hours. So I don't know if there's much to learn there really, but it gives a rough idea. You need to be careful at all stages of your flying. Fatal accidents happen to very experienced pilots as well as newer pilots. We've all heard on news reports that say that the pilot was a really experienced pilot. And I would say a lot of the reason for that is because the experienced pilots are the ones who are out flying all the time so they're the ones increasing their risk of having an accident. So keep that in mind. It would also be interesting to know of the lower hour pilots, you know, how often were they flying? Were they keeping current or was currency a factor in their accidents? Okay, enough morbid things. Let's move on to the world's first automated aero towing reconnection. This is quite interesting. I'll link to the video below. But this company is developing an active uh, reconnection system. And by active, I mean what the the basket that the glider pilot flies into is actively flying and keeping itself lined up with the glider which you can see in this video clip now you may be thinking like i did why would you bother doing this obviously if you're actually a glider pilot wanting to stay in the air well you could just land and get another aero tow it's probably a lot easier also you're unlikely to run out of altitude over your airfield so the reality is this is not designed for gliders, even though they are testing with a glider. What they're actually designing this for is electric commercial flying, where the aircraft have short range 
and they could get assisted by an automated drone to give them a tow through the air to mean that they don't have to stop and refuel or recharge the aircraft as frequently, thus extending the range of a passenger flight. That's the end goal. So the fact they're using gliders is just for their research and development phase. T-shirts, we've got our new season of designs coming online now on the pureglide.nz online store. This particular shirt was a special request for a friend to get a DG100 on a pink shirt. If you want your own, you can choose your own glider in a number of different colours. We started off with the Poochaz and the DG gliders. More coming soon. Each shirt is handcrafted, hand-drawn by myself. So it takes a bit of time to create each particular model. If you've got any requests for a particular model of aircraft, put it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. We've also got some new embroidered shirts such as this one, which is slightly nicer, high quality. There's also a hoodie available. Check that out. More coming soon. I've had a couple of requests for a Udi or Audi update from uh, Navita. That has been updated a lot now. We've now got a lot more contest based features. So it's now a viable option for contest flying. You can see now we can go to task and load in tasks, say from soaring spot, or you can scan a, someone's barcode and load in the task. So it makes it super easy to load in tasks into soaring into the device now. Come on, load a task. And then just click load. And there we go, we've loaded a task from soaring spot. So if your contest is using Soaring Spot, it makes it super easy to load a contest task in. And you can also add your own task manually if you want to. Really easy. We've now got the ability to load in our own custom airspace files, which is critical. If you're here in New Zealand, we have special files for contests. So that is a critical feature we needed. Nav boxes. We've got lots of uh, navigation nav boxes. Contest nav boxes, McCready, speed to fly, all that is in there now. All the task variables are in there. You can see it's raining here in New Zealand at the moment. Lovely. This is overlaying the rain radar. Very handy. There's a link in the description below to the CU subscription. If you, uh, it'll help support the channel if you use that to buy your CU subscription, and that gives you access to all the CU software and features, which is an awesome suite of products for flying with and analyzing your flight afterwards. And just a quick update on PureTrack. We've got a number of cool new features, including the ability to jump to a particular aircraft quickly and easily. Just type in the registration and it will show you the last known location of that aircraft. You can also share a link easily with your friends that will always take someone to your aircraft directly if you're flying. So you can share that with your wife bookmark it for them so they can always just click on it and jump to see exactly where you are at any time if you're in the air. So PureTrack is really uh, picking up steam in the US. So the team in Minden and Nevada have started rolling out PureTrack for all their members. Uh, the US is a great place for the use of PureTrack because it combines the OGN or FLAM tracking system which is starting to be rolled out across America. Combines that with ADS-B tracking and also in-reach or spot tracking which a lot of people who fly in the mountains there use. All that data from all the sources is merged into PureTrack so you can always find out where someone is no matter what data source they're using. Alright thanks for watching. Check out the description below we've got all the links to everything we've talked about in this video and we'll catch you next time.